Welcome to Environmental Science course for senior secondary level in NIOS. I am Milam Gupta, course coordinator of Environmental Science. Welcome you in this program. Dear learners, we have already discussed about general aspect of environmental pollution and its ill effects on human health. We had also discussed in details about air pollution, its sources, effect on environment and control in lesson 10, environmental science pollution part 1 of module 4. Today we will take on about water pollution, soil pollution, noise pollution and radiation pollution. This is a part 2 of the lesson 10 environmental pollution. For this discussion we have with us Dr. Ranjana Saxena, Associate Professor Dayal Singh College, University of Delhi. She has long association with NIOS. Welcome you ma'am in this program. Thank you Neelam. Hello dear learners, we all are aware that our sacred rivers like Ganga and Yamuna are polluted and every measure is now being taken by government and NGOs to clean these rivers. Now the point is, how did these rivers get polluted and how is the pollution of water bodies affecting our health? So what is water pollution? Any undesirable change in the physical, biological or chemical qualities of water by the addition of undesirable substances that degrade the quality of water and adversely affects the aquatic life and makes it unfit for use is water pollution. Just like air pollution, humans are the main cause of water pollution. However, some water pollution also occurs naturally. Some of the natural sources of water pollution are soil particles that enter the water through soil erosion, minerals from rocks and soil dissolved in water. Animal waste and dead fallen leaves also pollute the water bodies. Rivers, canals and lakes serve as dumping ground for sewage, solid and liquid waste. Now, Water pollution can either be underground water pollution or marine water pollution. So we have surface water pollution that can be underground or marine. Whether it is underground water pollution or marine water pollution, the question is how are water bodies getting polluted? Let us list the various causes of water pollution. Some of the causes are silt, pesticides, heavy metals, organic waste, domestic sewage, radioactive waste, detergent and fertilizers, mining and industrial waste, also sediments brought off by runoff from agricultural fields, industrial effluents and discharge of untreated or partially treated sewage into or near the water bodies is a source of water pollution indiscriminate disposal of fly ash or solid waste into the water bodies or near it too is a cause of concern. We have already studied about fly ash and solid waste in air pollution. Rivers, lakes, seas, oceans, estuaries and groundwater sources. All these sources may be polluted by point or non-point sources. Now what are these point and non-point sources? Point source water pollution is when water pollutants are discharged from a specific location directly into the water bodies. For example, wastewater effluent, untreated sewage, runoff storm or sewer overflow, waste disposal and animal feed lot. Whereas non-point source water pollution is diffused across a broad area and the contamination cannot be traced to a single discharge point. The examples are agricultural runoff, urban runoff, septic tank leakage, atmospheric deposition, pasture and range runoff, abundant mine runoff. These are all non-point water pollution. Now let us see how water pollution affects human health and that is the reason why water pollution is important. One of the cause 
of water pollution is bacterial infection, which causes waterborne diseases like typhoid, cholera, paratyphoid fever, and bacillary dysentery. Viral infections like infectious hepatitis, poliomyelitis are caused by viral infection in water. Protozoal infection, which causes waterborne disease like amoebic dysentery. Chemicals also are very harmful. For example, mercury in water causes Minamata disease in humans and dropsy in fishes. Lead causes dyspleksia, whereas cadmium in water causes itai itai disease. Now, let us see how pesticides are affecting our aquatic ecosystem. We have talked about chemicals affecting our ecosystem. Similarly, the pesticides also affect our aquatic ecosystem. Pesticides like DDT used in agriculture are carried into the water bodies that can contaminate it. Aquatic organisms now take up these pesticides from water. These pesticides then get into the food chain and move up the food chain. At higher trophic level, they get concentrated and may ultimately reach the upper end of the food chain. You all are aware of the harmful effects of pesticides, which we have done in air pollution as well. Some of the other effects of water pollution are loss of habitat, such as wetlands, eutrophication, eutrophication that is enrichment of water bodies by nutrients. Some other effects of water pollution are accidents of oil tankers in a sea spill, large quantity of oil in sea and adversely affect marine ecosystem. Increased turbidity of water because of sediment reduces penetration of light in water, thus affecting photosynthesis in aquatic plants. Enrichment of water bodies with nutrients causes eutrophication, that is what we have just mentioned. So what is eutrophication? Discharge of domestic waste, agricultural surface runoff, land drainage, an industrial influence in a water body leads to rapid nutrient enrichment in the water body. The excessive nutrient enrichment in a water body encourages the growth of algal duckweed, water hyacinth, phytoplankton and other aquatic plants. The biological demand for oxygen thus increases with the increase in aquatic organisms. As more plants grow, and die. The dead and decaying plants and organic matter, which are acted upon by microorganisms, deplete the water of dissolved oxygen. Decrease in dissolved oxygen result in sudden death of large population of fish and other aquatic organisms, including plants, releasing offensive smell, and making the water unfit for human use. Also, the sudden and explosive growth of phytoplankton and algae impart a green color to the water, which is known as water bloom or algal bloom. These phytoplankton release toxic substances in water that cause sudden death of large population of fishes. Now the question is, who is largely responsible for this eutrophication? Well, the obvious answer is humans. Do you know, dear learners, that power plants and other industries use lot of water for cooling purposes and the used hot water is discharged into rivers, streams or oceans. Discharge of this hot water may increase the temperature of the receiving water by 10 to 15 degrees centigrade above the ambient water temperature. And this is what is called as thermal pollution. Increase in water temperature decreases the dissolved oxygen in water. Obviously, aquatic organisms which are adapted to a uniform steady temperature of the environment will be affected because any fluctuation in water temperature will severely affect the aquatic plants and animals. Thermal pollution decreases thus the biological diversity. Can we reduce thermal pollution? 
Yes, we can. And one of the best methods of reducing thermal pollution is to store the hot water in cooling ponds and allow the water to cool before releasing into any receiving water body. Now, the most important aspect, how to reduce water pollution. Most important is educating people about the harmful effects of water pollution to humans and environment. Use less chemicals and manufactured products that contain plastic or metals. Minimize the use of agricultural chemicals like inorganic fertilizer, pesticides, soil stabilizers, etc. Develop effective stormwater runoff systems. Minimize the runoff from all the sources. Develop and enforce strict safety laws for oil drilling and transport. Wastewater treatment, that is, treat contaminated water, sewage water, etc., included in this, before releasing it into the environment. And most important, reuse and recycle. Recycling refers to the use of wastewater by the original user prior to the discharge either to a treatment system or to a receiving water body. Thus, wastewater is recovered and repetitively recycled with or without treatment by the same user. We have also talked about reuse and recycling in air pollution. Now, the most important point is do not dispose of household chemicals or cleaning agent down the sink or toilet. Now, this is how we as individuals can contribute in reducing water pollution. Use fewer chemicals. Whenever possible, use natural alternatives to chemicals. For example, you can clean your bathroom or kitchen with a mixture of vinegar and water or baking soda and salt paste instead of using chemicals. Detergents made with natural in ingredients can be used for washing clothes. Having talked about water pollution, let me now talk about another important type of pollution, which is soil pollution, because both air and water pollutants are definitely going to cause soil pollution. Now, what is soil pollution? Soil pollution is caused by the addition of chemicals or other unwanted substances in the natural soil environment. As you can see in the picture, soil pollution results in land degradation. Don't you think here again, we humans are responsible for the increase in soil pollution? Industrial activity, that is direct discharge of industrial waste to the soil. Agricultural chemicals, agrochemicals like pesticides, herbicides and excessive use of fertilizers are some of the sources of natural of soil pollution. Soil pollution can also be caused by intensive farming or improper disposal of waste, oil and fuel dumping, landfill and illegal dumping, nuclear and electronic waste are some other root cause of soil pollution. Now, some of the other causes of soil pollution are chemicals and waste from hospitals, plastic poly bags, seepage from landfill and solid waste seepage, percolation of contaminated water into the soil, leakage of underground storage tank, bad soil management, and not to miss deforestation. Why is it important, dear learners, for us to study soil pollution? Well, it is because soil pollution drastically affects not only the life of human beings and other animals, it also affects our vegetation. Some of the ill effects of soil pollution are the soil becomes unfit for agriculture, the crops and fodder grown on polluted soil may pass the pollutants to the consumers, Soil pollution affects the different types of microorganisms which are found in the soil. Hazardous substances present in the soil may poison the animals, thus leading to their death. Imbalance in food chain because of the harm caused to the vegetation and animals. Soil contaminants are driven by wind, 
thereby causing air pollution which is detrimental to health which we have already discussed in part 1. Now when contaminated soil is washed away in the water bodies it leads to water pollution which we have just discussed. The important question is how to control soil pollution? Well, it is not difficult to control soil pollution. It is essential to stop the use of plastic bags and instead use bags of degradable material like paper and cloth. Indiscriminate disposal of solid waste should be avoided, which we have also discussed in air pollution. Seabed should be treated properly before using as fertilizer and as landfills. The organic matter from domestic, agricultural and other waste should be segregated and subjected to vermicomposting which generates useful manure as a byproduct. The industrial waste prior to disposal should be properly treated for removing hazardous materials. Biomedical waste should be separately collected and incinerated in proper incinerators. Now, after talking about soil pollution, let me talk about another growing problem in our country, at least in the urban cities. Can you guess what it is? Well, it is noise pollution. Remember, we had defined environmental pollution as addition of any undesirable substance into the environment as a result of human activities. So, let us see how noise pollution is a part of environmental pollution. A loud music on the dancing floor may be an enjoyment for some people, but the same music can be irritating to sick patients or senior citizens or students who are studying. Similarly, a musical clock may be pleasing to your ears during the daytime, but the same musical clock may be irritating to you during the night time when you are trying to get some sleep, isn't it? You all must have experienced it. Similarly, loudspeakers, noise in industries, noise of generators, movement of heavy transport vehicles, noise of aircrafts and trains are all irritating sounds. Now, let us try to define noise pollution. What is noise pollution? Noise that is unwanted by the recipient is noise pollution. I am sure you will all agree to this definition. World Health Organization has prescribed optimum sound level for humans. It is 45 decibel by day and 35 decibel by night. Anything above this is a source of noise pollution and sound above 80 decibel is hazardous for our ears as per World Health Organization. Now, what are the various sources of noise pollution? Transportation, construction activities, industrialization, household gadgets, Social events, these are all the sources of noise pollution. Some others are marketplace activities, loud music at public places, aircraft, trains, boats. These are all outdoor sources of noise pollution. In rural areas, farm machines, pump sets, these two are the main source of noise pollution. Indoor sources of noise pollution includes radios, television, electric fans, exhausts, air conditioners, generators and home, home appliances. I have only listed a few of them. You can add more indoor and outdoor sources of noise pollution to this list. It will not be wrong to say that modern civilization, urbanization and industrialization are the root cause of noise pollution and once again we humans are responsible for it. Noise pollution besides being annoying and irritating causes increased mental stress, frustration and psychological effects are there. Hypertension, interference with communication and even loss of hearing are also effects of noise pollution.
insomnia, that is lack of sleep. Insomnia is lack of sleep. Aggression, emotional problems are some of the effects of noise pollution seen in humans. Sometimes noise pollution may be the cause of heart related ailments. In general, we can say there is a decrease in work efficiency because of noise pollution. It is very clear that humans are solely responsible for noise pollution also. So it is we who can also reduce noise pollution. Let us see how we can help in reducing noise pollution. Noise abatement measures include creating noise mounds, noise attenuation walls and well-maintained roads that is smooth surfacing of roads, retrofitting of locomotives, continuously welded rail track, use of electric locomotives or deployment of quieter rolling stock will reduce noise emanating from trains. Air traffic noise can be reduced by appropriate insulation and introduction of noise regulations for takeoff and landing of aircrafts at the airport. Industrial noises can be reduced by using soundproofing equipment. For example, generators can be made soundproof and also areas producing lot of noise can be made soundproof. Power tools, very loud music and land movers, public functions using loud, loud speakers, etc. should not be permitted at night. Use of horns, Alarms, etc., should be restricted. Use of firecrackers, which are noisy and also cause air pollution, should be restricted. A green belt of trees is an efficient noise absorber. Let us now, after talking about noise pollution, there is yet another very important type of pollution, which is radiation pollution. Urbanization and industrialization, again, the two sources or the two most important factors for radiation pollution. We all know that radiation is a form of energy traveling through space. Radiation can either be non-ionizing radiation or ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing radiation is relatively low energy radiation that does not have enough energy to ionize atoms or molecules, but have enough energy to excite the atoms and molecules of the medium through which they pass, causing them to vibrate faster. It is located at the low end of the electromagnetic spectrum. Non-ionizing radiation sources include power lines, microwaves, radio waves, infrared radiation, visible light, and lasers. On the other hand, ionizing radiation is the type of radiation that carries enough energy to break bonds between molecules and ionize atoms. Ultraviolet light, X-rays, gamma rays, and energetic particles produced in nuclear processes. Electrically charged particles like alpha and beta particles produced from radioactive decay and neutrons produced in nuclear fission are all sources of ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing radiation is potentially less harmful than the ionizing radiation because radiation of non-ionizing radiation has less energy than ionizing radiation and can cause molecules to move in an atom but it cannot remove electrons. Non-ionizing radiation does not penetrate deep into the tissues but increases the risk of damage to the skin and the eyes. Depending on the energy and exposure time, non-ionizing radiation can cause localized heating or photochemical reactions. It can however cause permanent harm if the exposure time is long. Therefore, exposure should be minimized. On the contrary, 
ionizing radiation is dangerous for the biological system. When atoms in living cells ionize, three things usually happen. The cell dies or the cell repairs itself or the cell mutates incorrectly and can become cancerous. However, not all the cells of the body are affected by ionizing radiation in the same way. So low doses of ionizing radiation can increase the chances of cancer. Dear learners, we now know what is radiation, different types of radiation and their effects. So let us now learn about radiation pollution. But first, let us define radiation pollution. Radioactive pollution is the release of unwanted radioactive material into the environment, which is actually the definition of environmental pollution. Radiation pollution can either be natural or man-made. Natural pollution can either be cosmic, solar, or terrestrial. Terrestrial again can be indoor or outdoor. So indoor is soil, natural gas, building material, these all contribute to indoor radiation pollution. Rocks and soil, they contribute to outdoor radiation pollution. Now let us talk about man-made radiation pollution. Industrial processes, waste from nuclear reactors, testing of nuclear weapons, production of nuclear fuel, disposal of nuclear waste, uranium mining, use in medical practice, x-ray examination, radiation therapy, occupational exposure, television, all of these are contributing to radiation pollution. As already stated earlier, radiations have a direct impact on human health. So let us now discuss the effects of radiation pollution on human health. Before that, let me tell you that radiation can cause damage, which can either be somatic damage or genetic damage. Now, what is somatic damage? Damage, which refers to the cells which are not associated with reproduction. Effects of somatic radiation includes eye cataract, reddening of the skin, skin cancer, breast cancer, damage to intestinal tract lining, resulting in nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, severe loss of white blood cells, as a result of which the victim is susceptible to infections, bone marrow damage leading to leukemia, fibrosis of lungs, loss of hair, and ulceration. These are all somatic damage caused by radiations. Now the genetic damage are the ones which are associated with reproduction, the cells which are associated with reproduction and cause gene mutation resulting in abnormalities and these are passed on to the next generation. Genetic radiation also causes thermal pollution. Nuclear power plants emit large amount of heat and use lot of water for cooling purposes which increases the temperature of water bodies as the hot water is discharged into it. Also, dumping of radioactive waste in marine system increases the temperature when these substances radiate energy. I have already discussed about thermal pollution and its effects on our aquatic ecosystem earlier in my talk. I am sure learners that effects of atomic explosion in Nagasaki and Hiroshima must be still in your minds. You may also not have forgotten the nuclear reactor accident at Chernobyl in 1986, which led to the death of many reactor personnel and a very large release of radionuclide to the environment, causing damage to the people living in the neighboring regions. I am sure, dear learners, you will not only take appropriate measures to reduce pollution in your homes and surrounding environment, but you will also educate others about the causes and ill effects of pollution and the ways by means of which you can reduce it. Thank you, dear learners.
Thank you Dr. Anjana Saxena for sharing information related to water pollution, radiation pollution, noise pollution, thermal pollution of lesson 10, environmental pollution part 2. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learnt. Addition of unresolvable substances in water is called water pollution. Natural resources of water pollution are soil erosion, leaching of minerals from rocks and decaying of organic matter, improper sea waste disposal, dumping of farm, yard, manure and agricultural chemicals, industrial effluents are causing pollution of groundwater. Nutrient enrichment of a water body is called eutrophication. Waste water from domestic or industry or garbage dump in generally known as seawage. Power plants and various industries used lot of water for cooling purposes and hot water is discharged into rivers, streams or oceans. This waste heat increases the temperature of the cooling water up to 10 to 15 degree centigrade. This is thermal pollution. Addition of substances which adversely affect the quality of soil or fertility is known as soil pollution. Sources of soil pollution are plastic bags, industrial sources, agriculture sources, etc. Indoor sources include noise produced by radio, television and outdoor sources includes indiscriminate use of loudspeakers, industrial activities, automobile, rail traffic and aeroplanes, etc. Radiation is a form of energy traveling through space. Radiation pollution can cause somatic as well as genetic damage to humans and other organisms. Dear learners, this is all about lesson 10, environmental pollution part 2 of module 4. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.